That's it. That's the that's the intro. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of the Stale Popcorn Podcast. It's your host Chris and my my co-host, my uh, my friend, my pal, my Padawan Steve. How are you doing, Steve? Good, good. I'm doing great. I like that Padawan. So yeah, nerd reference. A little I like it. Star Wars, because as we know, May is coming up next month, mm, and. Yes. Also, I don't know if you saw a trailer last week for Kong, was that the movie? Or Monkey Man? But it was the 25th anniversary of Star Wars coming coming up. Didn't Star Wars come out in like 77? Well, The Phantom Menace, the best one. The the episode one. Sure, sure, yeah, okay. (laughs) I guess I should, I didn't think I needed to clarify, I should know. And and apparently, uh, The Mummy. 25 years of that. They're showing that in theaters as well. Now that I can get behind. That's some good stuff right there. I like that. Well, let me tell you. Yeah, they showed the trailer and I was, you know, it shows, it's the trailer for The Mummy and I'm like, what are they, what are they doing here? (laughs) This looks exactly the same. And they're like, 25 year. And I'm like, oh, that's pretty fun. You know, I'm a fan of the franchise here. But I'm I, I'm always wonder who does anyone actually go to the theaters and pay money to watch a movie that's been out for 25 years? Have you ever done that? Myself, no, but probably old people. They got they're like, oh yeah, I remember this movie. Let me spend my my pension on this this month. I got nothing better yeah. to do. I've never been tempted, even like you know, Lord of the Rings or whatever. I'm like, that's a good film, but I already have it on Blu-ray on HBO, Laser whatever disc. You it got is. It all, buddy. Laser disc, VHS extended whatever it is i don't really need to spend 10 bucks to watch it in a theater personally sure sure i also saw they're putting the nolan movies in the theaters again like the nolan batman movies yeah oh i thought it just meant all of his movies (laughs) it's it's a handful sure i saw at least in the regal near here they put in the dark knight on wednesday or whatever next week is interstellar week after that inception week after that insomnia week after that dunkirk very good very good and i'm like i like the films but again you wouldn't spend money i, I don't again. assume they're making that much dough off this but i guess they i don't know i don't know how that works anyway chris i got i uh i think last week was uh, a interesting week because we had a little intro song in our podcast that was great thanks help to you and when you sent me that i was like is that the theme song from uh, Spider-Man 3 when he goes emo? And you're like, I was like, maybe we should use that one. You're like, well, I don't know about copyright. We might get a copyright claim or whatever. And I proposed to you, I, I, I got a solution if you'll indulge me. Oh, I'll indulge. I always indulge. So, so in order to avoid copyright, I'll give you a clean plate here of me doing an impression of it. How about that? Oh, so this is just going to be the intro? This is the intro, yeah. An yeah. outro from now on. From now whatever on. this is, one take, no redo. Yep. <laughs> Okay. All right, the floor is yours, Steve. Here's a clean plate. Ready? Ready? That's it. That's the that's the intro. All right, that's fair. from what I'm hearing now. It's very soothing on the ears. It's gonna really <laughs> pull us in and pull us out, and that's going in there. It's going to be in the intro of this podcast, and everyone's going to be very confused for <laughs> <laughs> until they get to the five-minute mark here where we talk about it. Very Just be good. like, what What was that about? But, uh, yeah, I like that. It's a great announcement. Thank you. Uh, so I guess jumping into announcements, there's a specific trailer I want to talk to you about, and that's Joker 2. Did you see that trailer? No, I didn't. Well... <laughs> I heard, I heard it was the most viewed trailer. They always say like, that. They said that about the last trailer. Give me a how break. How do they track that? But maybe you should just watch it real quick. I want to see your thoughts. All right, I'll watch it here. Wow, and what a back. trailer that is! Chris just watched it fresh on the top of his dome. What do you think? Well, having said earlier that I heard it was the most viewed trailer in cinematic history. With that going in mind, it was a little. 
Eh. Meh. But I, I did think that Lady Gaga drawing the smiley face with her lip gloss on the... Yeah. And then he smiles. That was and fun. That was a fun show. That was cool. I, I, shivers. Ooh. Chills. Literal chills. 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 <laughs> uh, I have here in my notes, everyone had one of these couples in middle school where they're just mm. the creep little on their own, you know, kissing and yeah. hugging. You know what I'm talking about, those emo creeps. <laughs> I know exactly. <laughs> They go into the same tree every recess. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I don't know. It looks pretty good. More of the same thing, more or less. Yeah. Have you have you ever heard of a movie like a sequel that does that? Because I sure as heck haven't. No, not off the top of my head. <laughs> Again, I'm not a musical guy. Give me High School Musical. Give me uh, Greatest Showman. Greatest Showman. You're there. Open nothing the night. else. Maybe throwing a few Les Mis tracks. Mm. That's kind of the danger zone for me i don't go past that sure so anything new if it doesn't got a hugh jackman in it get it out of here kinda, yeah hugh jackman or zach efron it's gotta have one of the two <laughs> ringing endorsements of those yeah yeah <laughs> now yeah this looks good we'll see it whatever moving on <laughs> yeah moving on some random movie news i've been seeing Kit Harrington says Jon Snow series is no longer happening. I Currently, didn't know it's it was off going the to table happen. because we all couldn't find the right story to tell. Mm. I remember hearing about it like a year ago or so, and I was like, ah. And then I remember when the last season of Game of Thrones, there was like five shows that seemed like, oh, we're going to do... Spin-offs you know, after spin-offs, blah, blah, yeah. blah, blah, this, 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 and I'm pretty sure most of them got canceled, mm-hmm. including this one. Yeah. Another thing I, I got here, the Sonic films will become Avengers-level events. Big, exciting stories that have a lot of different characters. Well, I mean, what do you think of that? <laughs> <laughs> have you seen any of those? <laughs> no, man. I mean, like, I, I haven't. I played the games as a kid, but I'm sure. pretty sure it's just Sonic and Running after Knuckles. rings, and what more can you and do? And there's rings. Well, there you know, about. now that you mention it, there's a huge cult-like following for 10-year-olds who love Sonic the Hedgehog, who will just cream in their jeans for crap like this. And they it's kind of like a Five Nights at Freddy's, where there's unreasonably mm. large amount of lore behind this crap. So they really? got droves of, of books and comics and stuff to build off of. So do I agree with it? No. Am I excited? No. <laughs> Next one. Robert Downey Jr. says he would happily return to the MCU as Iron Man. Oh, I bet he would. It's too integral a part a part of my DNA. That role chose me. And look, I always say never, ever bet against Kevin Feige. It's a losing bet. Hmm. He's the house. He will always win. Now, Steve, would you be... Interested with uh, Iron Man, Robert Downey June coming back, or is it too far gone for you at this point? Uh, me personally, I probably would just like to leave it as is. You know, try to get some new blood in there, reinvigorate. Because if you, it kind of cheapens his death. To be H, you know, mm-hmm. like I don't know if you brought him back I and mean, just be like, hey, remember that time he sacrificed himself? Even if it's a variant or in a different multiverse, it's just like. He's back, whatever. And I don't think, you know, to quote Tiger King, they'll never financially recover from this for paying him $100 million now that he's an Oscar winner, you know. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. as, uh, I don't know. How do you feel about Wolverine coming back? Ain't that the same kind of thing? Yeah, I guess, you know, if it's a one-off. I don't know, man. I don't know. I guess I just, I like uh, Hugh Jackman a bit more in that role. I don't know, man. It's it's kind of over for me, except I'll still watch the Spider-Mans. I got the uh, Deadpool, Wolverine stuff. It kind of seems like a Hail Mary if they're just like, hey, uh, before you all leave and abandon the MCU, Iron Man's coming back. You know, it kind of seems like a last-ditch effort mm-hmm. if they were to do that, in my opinion. Next one, a movie called Night Bitch, starring Amy Adams, will release on December 6th in theaters. The horror thriller follows a woman who is convinced she is turning into a dog. Hence the title. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Isn't that an exciting premise? (laughs) Not 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 super into it. (laughs) I gotta be honest. I I uh, 
have little to no idea how that'll play out. I don't know, man. That's, <laughs> you said Amy Adams is in this? Yeah. She's turning into a dog. We got a shaggy dog situation. If it's anything like the Tim Allen shaggy dog, then I'm all for it. Also starring Robert Downey Jr. Shaggy dog. That was his comeback. Oh, I thought Iron Man was his comeback. <laughs> no, People like to credit Iron Man, but Shaggy Dog was the <laughs> real Shaggy Dog. When he came yeah. back. <laughs> How about this one? Giancarlo Esposito. Oh, Gus Fring. People come to me and say, you're a highly underrated actor. I never know when that's said whether to feel awful or great. I love it when I'm brought in and I hit a home run and people are like, whoa. Now, the question to you, is he underrated or overrated or rightfully rated i would say he's rated you know he's got his rated. his chops for x rated <laughs> <laughs> very good uh that was a genuine laugh uh no but um, <laughs> yeah sure no i think yeah no he's rated better call saul and breaking bad i think he's left his footprint pretty well has he ever not played a villain uh i've never i don't think i saw I've him in anything. a show called kaleidoscope on netflix where he plays kind of an anti-hero and off the dome, that's the closest thing I can think of. But I think he just plays better as a lot of people are pushing for him to be uh, Professor X in the new X Men reboots whenever that comes out. Is that because he's X rated? <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Uh, that was genuine as well, right? Yep, yep, yep. Trying on new laughs this week. <laughs> All right, next one Alan Rich- Richson. Mm. You know who that is? Jackathan Reacher. Reiterates how much he wants to play Batman. Okay, I'll shout it from the rooftops. I want to be Bruce Wayne. <laughs> what do you think? Uh, Can you know, Castle be Bruce Wayne? I, I think he's good as an iconic Jack Reacher. I think he should keep doing that. Because mm. if, he, here we go, if he's if he's Bruce Wayne, he's a hulking beast of a man. He's like, I don't know, six, five, big, big boy, big, big chungus, right? In a good mm-hmm. way. But if... He's Batman. He's got this big towering figure and recognizable. And then if he's Bruce Wayne, everyone's like, hey, this guy's huge. Like He's got the same body as that giant Batman running around. You know, it just kind of blows his cover a little bit, if you ask me. If that's just my two cents on the battle. Well, he could go Christian Bale machinist, if you will. <laughs> if we learned anything from our unhinged <laughs> reviews, we like a nice, sick-looking, sick looking go-get-em freak uh, Batman. Pale little <laughs> Batman, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I I think he would be fine. He'd definitely be better than Ben Affleck, if you ask me. Here's here's another issue I have with it. He's not old, but I think he's a little too old for the role of Batman. I mean, just because if you're looking at, at franchises like this, I think they cast, her, cast it a bit younger so that they can make more movies, like Robert Pattinson's kind of on the younger side, so they can make two or three down the line. Alan Richardson's, he's probably late 40s, which again, isn't old. He's a, you know, good shape, whatever, but his time is limited, If you know what, you know what I mean? Mm. Without being rude. That was kind of a dark omen there. His time, <laughs> his time is, is limited. limited. I'm coming for you, Alan. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to do to you what they did to Bruce's parents, if you know <laughs> yeah. what I mean. No, I don't know. Do, do, do you like that casting? What do you think? I think it's fine. Not really for nor against. Mm-hmm. It's just kind of fine. It's just there. Also, sad news. If you remember last week from Monkey Man, the villain. Oh, The Rock. The Rock look like Troy Polamalu. Oh, yes, sure. Which we we discussed was really O.J. Simpson in a wig. (laughs) Yes. Unfortunately, O.J. Simpson has passed. So that was his last, I guess, acting job. I want to thank you for bringing that up because I saw the funniest meme the other day. It said, finally, O.J. can rest knowing his wife's killer is dead. (laughs) (laughs) That's pretty good. A live-action R-rated Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles The Last Ronin movie is in the works. That's a lot of words. Who's that for? Is what <laughs> <Yeah>. I'm... <laughs> Didn't they try this already? Did they try it? I mean, the live-action Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. No, it's an R-rated. Oh, that's the only difference. Well, it's kind of a big difference. One's for children and one's... Okay, I don't really have an affinity for TMNT, but... I don't either. I'm not in general, but I, I'm just... Who's the audience? I don't. I don't understand. It's a kids show, and you're like, "Ooh, let's make it rated R." There's actually there's probably a, a droves of neck beards out there who are 
prime, like mid thirties, who are just like mm. I grew up on the TMNT, tree, and it was actually a rich historical lore and fantastic characters. Yeah, I know they got a cult like following too, so it's probably for yeah. older generations. So sure, have at it, go for it. All right, all right. Keanu Reeves returns as John Wick <gasps> in Ballerina. Ooh. First trailer at CinemaCon includes a ton of sword action sequences featuring Anna G. Armas and a, glimpse, uh, and a glimpse of Norman Reedus. Norman Reedus? He, is he going to be the villain? I guess. I don't know. i just seen hmm. that he's in it. Oh, well, that's kind of fun, you know? You ever see that hit film with Norman Reedus, Boondock Saints? I, I did. I, I saw that with you, I think. I think so. <laughs> yeah. No. Classic. I just see Willem Dafoe uh, yeah. conducting nothing. <laughs> <laughs> just everything exploding. If you, <laughs> if you search Willem Dafoe and GIFs, 80% like are just is, yeah. from that movie. Oh, this is from CinemaCon. So I guess they show a bunch of trailers, announce things. They're making a Now You See Me 3, directed Oof. by Ruben Fischer. Starring the original cast with a new generation of magician thieves. Oof. You excited for that? <laughs> no, and I'll tell you why. I, uh, You know, Hollywood, in all of its stupidity, they had one chance to get this right. They, they had a movie called Now You See Me, and the sequel, what do you think it should have been called? Now You Don't. Right! <laughs> but it's called Now You See Me Too. You freaking idiots. Gosh, you had one job. One I'm pretty job. sure there was a Disney Channel original movie called Now You See Me, Now You Don't. Maybe they didn't want to step on the toes <laughs> of that. Yeah, well, if you if you search that, yeah, they, they'd mix that up. But no, I, I the first one's fine. The second one didn't care for, so I can't yeah. really... I don't know if there's... I don't care about that at all. I feel the same. Yeah, they're doing a live-action Monopoly movie with Margot Robbie. I guess she's... Staying in that area. Hollywood learning the wrong lessons from Barbie again. I guess. Good job. Oh, some more info on John Wick here. We see the origins of uh, the ballerina as she's taken in the Ruska Roman crime family and trained to be an elite assassin. She admires John Wick from a distance as he grows in notoriety in his own story, but doesn't get to actually meet him face to face until she goes on her own adventure. And apparently it's supposed to take place between John Wick 3 and John Wick 4, so it's not uh, after John Wick 4 if you catch my drift. Wh so it's why not though? messing. If do you remember the ending of a certain John Wick 4? I'm trying not to spoil anything in case no one's seen the film here. Uh, I guess. What do you mean, I guess? Yeah, no, no. I just I just think movies should start... It's a spinoff. Have it do its own thing. I don't know, man. I don't know. Well, I know, but there's a time... There's a sacred timeline. Screw that timeline, man. Just don't. Just do it. I don't care. All right. There's a Gladiator 2. I got some details on that. Ooh, with Have her boy Digimon. Yeah. Have you seen the first one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good stuff. So, Gladiator 2, set 20 years after the first film, Paul Mescal plays a nobleman who has renounced his privilege inspired by Maximus, has man-eating monkeys, a charging rhino and sharks, Pedro Pascal. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you just kind of glanced over those real quick. Yeah. I was like, is this, uh, is this real? And I... I looked it up, and it was on other places, so they're just like, yeah, it's got, you know, the, the Sharknado, heck? we got man-eating monkeys, charging rhino. Pedro Pascal plays a Roman general forced to become a gladiator. Is Pedro Pascal in too many things nowadays, or is that just me? I, I, I like him. Right. He's uh, he's Brazilian, so I'm, I'm a fan of the Brazils, sure, you know? Sure, He's in it. I'm a fan of his. Denzel's in it. Whoever just Joseph Quinn is, don't know who that is. I think he's but, in a uh, show called Normal People. Don't know what that is. It's about normal people, just like you and me. Kristen Dunst, Kirsten Dunst, hmm. doesn't think we need a Spider-Man 4. It was so long ago. What would the story be? It would really depend on the script. But let's maybe leave things when they were good. What do you think? Spider-Man 4 or, or is Kirsten on to something here? Ah, uh, I think Kirsten might be on to something. Just, you know, finish your cake and end it. Fan of the trilogy, but there's kind of, there's always that mummy, uh, Indiana Jones, where yeah. it's, you know, it's it's been too long, and then they do it, and then you just You're brush like, that it was, off that's and what act we waited like for. that never like, happened. Yeah. And, and the, the problem with that is people always 
build up in their mind the most fantastic movie, and if it doesn't live up to that, then they'll be mad and butthurt yeah. about it. The new, the last Spider Man, the No Way In Way Home, or oh, uh, something yeah, sure. home. Got to get, got to get home to Aunt May. She's dead. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I got to had to beat this old lady with the stick or whatever <laughs> yeah. it was. Speaking of Kirsten, Civil War starring Kirsten Dunst is tracking to be A 24s first ever film to be number one domestically on an opening weekend. That's I didn't know surprising. that was an A twenty four film. It doesn't seem like them. Apparently so. Hmm. Are you gonna watch it? No. Yeah, I, I'll I'll stop it there. All right. But just to letting you know what's going on in the world here. Well, thank you. Yeah, I appreciate that. Well, then, Chris, You're I welcome. got a question for you. What you been watching? I'm all up on Shogun. Watched my episode there. Mm-hmm. Excited for next week's. We started watching a show called Three Bodies. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> Three Bodies or Three Body Problem? Well, I don't What's the difference? A, a word? <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe I seen the prequel then, but uh, yeah, I'm watching something. Got a bunch of Game of Thrones actors, yes. like five, I believe. I saw. I believe it's from DB, not DB it Cooper. Is. Heaven forbid. Why, wise, JB Wise, and the Benioff wise. and DB Cooper, and yeah, whatever their names something are. And I didn't finish it, but we started that. Okay, well then, I, I'll, I, I'll I'll let you finish that. And we can talk about it next week because I've finished it, and I want to. Converse with you on what you thought, so I won't talk about what I've been watching because that was it. But all right, that's all I've seen. Besides what we're going to talk about later today. All right, yeah, me too. I think what we've been, what we're going to talk about, took up a good chunk of time. Uh, but I'm really excited to talk about it, and that is we're going to be talking about the Fallout TV show on Amazon again. If you guys are new to the this show, what we're going to do is uh, talk about the plot a little bit, and then. Uh, whether or not you should watch it, and then we'll go into spoilers if uh, if that's prudent, if, if we can do that. We'll yes. Do that. Fallout is based off of a video game. You played the game before? I have. I was a big fan of Fallout 4 in college. I bummed off one of our mutual friends, his Xbox. Shout out to Sam if you're listening. I bummed off his Xbox One. And this, uh, I played Fallout 4 a lot, like... That that was my nine to five. I'd punch in and homework, girls, school, food. These were just obstacles in the way of getting <laughs> to more Fallout for me. <laughs> no, I love the game. It's good stuff. I love free open world, and uh, I love this game so much. Like I never buy merch for anything. I almost it they almost made me buy a Pit Boy bobblehead and and a poster, but I didn't because I would look at this thing and be like, what What do I do with this? But that's how much <laughs> I enjoyed the. The world of Fallout Four, but yes. So, short answer: Yes, I've played yeah. Fallout. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so I I played a little. I think most of my experience is just watching Steve here go into town on whatever's going on in Fallout here. A common thing I remember hearing throughout my youths, my adulthood, is that you can't make a good video game movie mm-hmm. or show. Mm-hmm. And I, and I just, I went on Wikipedia here to run through and just look at the theatrical releases of uh, movies based off video games. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you starting back in the 90s, you got your uh, Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat, Tomb Raiders, your bangers Resident after bangers. Evils, Doom. You remember that movie with The Rock? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Silent Hill, Hitman. Remember that one? Hitman. Ugh. Oh, with Timothy Oliphant? Yep. Sure. Prince of Persia, Sands of Time. You've seen that one. Yeah. Oof. What a miscalculation. Well, don't tell my mother that, because she (laughs) adores that movie. (laughs) I'm not even kidding. She's got, like, a (laughs) full-on theatrical-sized poster hanging in her theater room of Prince of Persia. Oh, wow. She has all the classics, you know, Princess Bride, Star Wars, Godfather, yada yada, and then it's just Prince of Persia saying the time. <laughs> and I'm like, all right. Did she get that one for free and was like, well, might as well. No, I think she spent like 25 bucks on oh, it. Oh, wow. She's, she's a fan of the, the movie. Which, so I don't hate that one. Sure. Out of all these, that's my favorite so far, personally. All right. But then you go, you got Need for Speed with... Uh, Aaron Paul. Aaron Paul. Warcraft. Ooh. Remember that one? Yes. Warcraft. I like that still. I don't care what no one says. Oh, that's a fun movie. Yeah. 
And then Assassin's Creed, the new yeah. Tomb Raider, Rampage. You're opening my eyes to a whole the, world of bad movies here, man. Yeah. I love it. He got P- Pokemon uh, oh, Detective good. Pikachu, yeah. which was... It was all right. And then you got the Sonics, more, the new Mortal Kombat, you know, Uncharted. Mm-hmm. Five Nights at Freddy's. Ugh. You see that one? Uh. <laughs> that was That was brutal. <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I did a recap video of that one, so I get it. So anyways, out of all of these, the highest Rotten Tomato score is Sonic the Hedgehog 2 with 69%. But most, a Easy. majority are under 50%. Wow. For some reason, they don't have the new Mo- Super Mario, but even that one, apparently the Rotten Tomato is only a 59%, which I thought it would have been higher. That's Yeah, that seems a bit low for that. That one was all right. Yeah, I thought it was fine. So, anyways, I'm saying that it's, for whatever reason, they can't make a movie that's that great. But TV shows, they did some random Resident Evil, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. But recently, they had Halo, which i never seen, but I heard it's not Oh, two thumbs great. down, if you ask you me. you seen it? Down to the ground, down to China, if you can put them down that far. Yeah. And then you got The Last of Us, which is fantastic, if you ask me. I haven't seen that yet. It's on my list. Really? Uh, yeah. Oh, that's a, it's fantastic. I'm surprised you ain't seen it. Wow. And then Twisted Metal, which I haven't seen, but That one was pretty good. I saw the first few episodes. It's got pretty good reviews. So, going in, I... I'll admit, I might have been a little skeptical on Fallout, just on past Mm -hmm. video games. Yeah. And i kind of a little familiar with the game, but I haven't really dove too deep, if you know what I mean. Well, if I could do do a little bit of background about the show, if if you'll indulge me. Don't even ask. I'm indulging. You got (laughs) consent to do whatever you please. So just real quick, the Fallout series has been around since the 90s, and there have been talks to develop a TV show since 2008 after Fallout 3. Todd Howard, who is the creative director of Bethesda and, and kind of the overseer, if you will, of the Fallout game series, He said he was always interested in doing a Fallout show, but didn't want a, quote, doom situation, as, you know, Mm -hmm. with the Rock movie. Ugh. Uh, That all changed when he had a call with Jonathan Nolan, where he pitched his idea for his show. Quote, Howard found that Nolan had a clear vision for the adaptation and agreed this approach was a good way to bring the game series to the television screen, end quote. And I'm sure that it didn't have to do with the fact that Jonathan Nolan is brothers with Christopher Nolan. So uh, a little bit of background there. I mean, they've been wanting to do this for years and now they finally did it. And short answer, I am glad that they did it with the right people because this is great. I'll just say it's great. Yeah, it's great. Kind of a little synopsis of it. It's a post-atomic war area where there's radiation. There's people that are in vaults that have been in the vaults for hundreds of years. There's people above ground that, you know, it's kind of wild, wild west out here. Mm-hmm. So, so no Will uh, Smith. No Will Smith. No, not even Salma Hayek. Mm. There's people, uh, they're kind of savages, if you will. Barely even They're humans. not very, yeah, <laughs> barely <laughs> human. The, they're not very kind to each other, not obeying the golden rule. Mm-hmm. It's uh, action, comedy. I'd say it's a uh, black comedy. Would you agree with me there? Yes, very much so. It's not quite The Boys, where it's as gory and irreverent, if yeah. you will. It's probably a step... It's somewhere between that and, like, Invincible, I'd say. Like, a couple yeah. steps down from The Boys, but... It is something you will have to be careful who you recommend to, because they might come back to you and be like, what's wrong with you? You know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> For instance, if you were to recommend this to your mother, that saint of a mother who loves Prince of Persia, well, she'd be like, mine, uh, "She would hang that on the wall. <laughs> That'd go right between Finding Nemo and uh, Prince of Persia, right there." Yeah, it's a good stuff. If I can expand on the lore or the plot a little bit, yeah, it follows after um, a nuclear war that started in 2077. It's kind of a alternate timeline of Earth where survivors took refuge in these fallout bunkers or or vaults. And the main character is a vault dweller named Lucy. takes place 200 years after the fallout and the the nuclear bombs went off. She leaves her vault, Vault 33, to venture out to save her father who was kidnapped. She goes out to what's called the wasteland or the surface world. It also follows a, a ghoul, a kind of a 
just a gross, sickly, leather-faced man, played by Walton Goggins, and another storyline that follows Maximus, who is a squire from the Brotherhood of Steel. All this probably doesn't make any sense to people listening, but there's, <laughs> there's a lot going on, but kind of those are the three main parties, and, and shenanigans ensue, but yeah, that, that pretty much covers it, non-spoilers, right? Yeah. It's a movie that doesn't, or a show that sure. doesn't take itself serious, like too serious. It's kind, of, it's got that, uh, that roadhouse. And you know <laughs> me, I love, uh, I love a show that doesn't take itself too serious. There's a lot of comedy, good action, uh, mm-hmm. like, you know, fun little action scenes. It starts off, you're immediately hooked and it's not, it's not one that really drags at all. Yeah. So uh, I I would recommend I'd probably give it four stars if you're yeah. asking me. I uh, yeah I'd say four or four and a half even just good television like if you just stand it on its own don't really think about like the people who are into the Fallout lore if you're just coming into this and you just want some good television to watch this is this is good television I guess do you want to jump into spoilers now Yeah let's get into spoilers here you got it starts off you have perspective of the people in the vault which is lucy her brother is uh mitchell moises mitchell moises Moises? not mitchell oh no moise moi moises aries or something like that he was from disney aka rico oh yeah from montana you got rico he's he's there he's her brother it starts off she's got a arranged wedding and and the way the vaults work is there's hundreds of vaults around, but each vault is closed off, and the only way people can get in is if someone basically lets them in or if someone from outside has a... What do they call those wrist things? It's called a pit boy. A oh, pit boy. Basically, they, they have this wedding where they're like, all right, you send this you know, nice stud from 32 over, we'll have a nice wedding here, and, and he's going to marry Lucy here. And it turns out it's a, it's a red wedding situation. It's they start trap. murdering. It's a trap. <laughs> this lady named Moldaver. Moldaver. She's kind of the leader of these people that are murdering. She steals Lucy's dad. And they leave. Snatch them, kidnap. So Lucy, she say, I don't care if there's radiation out there. I'm going to get dad. So she sneaks out. And the whole reason they're in the vault is because there was nuclear warfare and there's a bunch of radiation out there, as Steve touched on earlier. So you got that storyline of her going to find her dad. And then there's another storyline of Walton Goggins as a ghoul. And he's he's he looks like you know Red Skull here. He's got the chopped Bleached off nose. Red Skull, if you will. It's him as the ghoul, and then it does a lot of flashbacks of him before the whole thing happened, mm-hmm. which was two hundred something years earlier. So apparently, the radiation will turn you into a ghoul, and that's how he's alive still. And if you have some sort of medicine, it'll keep him sane. But if he doesn't have the constantly drinking this medicine, he goes feral, goes savage. So you got his storyline, and then you got this kind of dweeb little... (laughs) That'd be nice. (laughs) I didn't really like him. What's his name? Maximus? Maximus. He's with, like, the Brotherhood, which is... kind of a militarized uh, faction. He's with this military people, and he's a squire. He's a little pipsqueak guy, and he's basically like the caddy for some guy in this big old marine suit. It's called a power armor, if you will. Power armor. And that guy's a real J-U-R-K to him. So he gets attacked by a bear, and instead of saving him, he kind of just lets him die. So he steals his armor. tactical move. I feel like he didn't do anything wrong, if you ask me. (laughs) Yeah. Steals the armor. And then, fourth uh, story perspective here, you got Benjamin Linus, I think his name was. Oh, Ben from Lost, yeah. Yeah. For, yeah. He, he's a scientist He plays for, Ben from Lost. <laughs> yeah. He's a scientist. Was he working for the Vault Company? Yeah, he was, was working he? for Vault Tech on 
I, kind of, I think renewable, or different kinds of energy. Yeah. I think he, he, he shoots this basically, you know, Doc Ock, power of the sun in the palm of my hand <laughs> into his neck. Yeah. He shoots it in his neck and, he, and he's trying to get to Moldaver. If so is Lucy. The goal is trying to hunt Ben because there's a warrant out for his arrest. The Marines also looking for him. So that's kind of where they all meet. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, goes off on that. She ends up teaming up with the ghoul and the, they're all friends. She chops off Ben's head. It's a whole, fu- you know, carries his head around. Uh, that seemed very on brand for Fallout. Just kind of like, yeah, there has to mission. be a MacGuffin in, in most <laughs> yeah. movies, most things. But like, I, I thought it was fun as weird as that may sound, that the MacGuffin that everyone's after is this guy's head. And more specifically, it's not his head. He implanted the chip or the MacGuffin device in his neck, and so they've been carrying his head around, and that's what everyone's after. I thought it was very tongue-in-cheek, very you know, very specific and uh, yeah. on-brand with the genre, if you will. But some cons. I wasn't a huge fan of the Maximus, if I'm being honest. Sure, I get that. I didn't really care for him too much, and his story arc wasn't really... Yeah, I don't know if it was eh. the actor. I've never seen him in anything else, or if it's the character they've been written, but I was like, is this guy, like, all there? (laughs) Like, (laughs) I wasn't... I don't know if it was a directorial choice to have him just, like, super awkward. Maybe it's a product of him being in the specific Brotherhood, or... I I don't know. That was, yeah. I'd say the weakest of the characters is definitely Maximus. Mm Mm-hmm. What cons you got here, Steve? I got I, I, I got just a few qualms. Um, nothing huge, nothing that ruined it for me. Most of it, so I got one that says the plot was a bit thin. You know, it's a fetch quest, but mm-hmm. then again, it's based on a video game. So there's people going after one thing, and it's we've seen that kind of thing. But here it's just been done a little bit better. So I think a lot of things that I've read online, people are mad at that it changes some of the lore of the Fallout video games. And uh, I don't know, because I'm a fan of the games, but it wasn't a deal breaker for me, you know? Does that make sense? Like, mm-hmm. it kind of stands on its own, even though it takes place in the same world as Fallout, like the whole series. But one major kind of qualm that I had is at the beginning, you mentioned it, that so there, there's people in Vault 33, and then every year they're, or not every year, whenever they need a new mate, they're connected to Vault 32. When they opened the door and saw all those people, why did none of them be like, Hey, I don't know who you people are. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? Cuz it's like if the if they know who the other people are like always and they open the door, they see these raiders dressed in their clothes. Why isn't anyone been like or the dad even like cuz he knows, he knows what's up. He's been to the other vaults. He's like, "Who are you people?" That was my only thing. Maybe they never talked to 32 cuz there was one I think there was two other people that were from 31, Mm -hmm. which maybe maybe this is their first time working with 32 or so. I don't know, but that is a, that does make sense. You would think they would know at least someone here, right? Yeah. Because if you remember Stephanie, the blonde woman who's pregnant, she said she met her husband from 32. So that means in the past that they had a ceremony like this and they even on the dress, you know how they have written like. So and so was married in this dress, presumably to people in thirty two. It's not explicitly said, but at least Stephanie knows that there's they had that ceremony where people from thirty two come in. Now well, maybe they didn't meet all of them. I don't, I don't know. think he was from thirty two though, because she's from thirty one. Why would they be at thirty three? Ah, uh, okay. Anyway, I think she came there from thirty one because, again, spoiler: all the people from thirty one, they do a, a Rocket Man sleeping. You know, they, <laughs> what's that movie? Uh, that one uh, Chris Pratt, Jennifer Lawrence space movie. Oh, Passengers. Movie. They do a Passengers where they kind of just go in hyper sleep mm-hmm. and then they come out hundreds of years later. Yeah. Because, um, so that's how the blonde, she's in on the whole thing. Mm-hmm. Which I guess a main point of this is you find out throughout the backstories, Walter Goggins, Walton, is it Walton or Walter? Walton. Walton. The ghoul, he was a famous, he was basically John Wayne, sure. and it, it starts off, you said 2077? And, uh, that's when, like, the new, well, I guess that did start then. Yeah, so 2077 is when it starts. Okay. 
and he's like a actor, but apparently his wife works with the Vault Company. What's the word? Vault Tech. Vault Tech. And basically, they have this evil scheme where they want to control the world, have power, where they they build all these vaults because they're in like a world war, nuclear warfare. They're expecting nukes to be dropped, and these vaults are impenetrable, Mm -hmm. impregnable. Very much uh, so. They build them all around, and instead of actually waiting for a warfare, they just say, screw it, we're dropping a bomb ourselves. We do, we want to basically kill everyone except who we want in these vaults. And there's different people in charge of each vault, and it's just kind of whatever they want to do in mm-hmm. the vaults. So some are, you know, running experiments to doing, you know, turning these guys with one eye. Some of them are, all right, let's put these people in, survival of the fittest, Darwin's law, you know, so-and-so and this. So it's all basically kind of these people's Sims game. Talk about uh, doing what you can to boost up those sales numbers, am I right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> they started a nuclear war so they could sell more vaults. Give me a break, people. Jeez. Corporatism, you know what I'm saying? Jeez. I feel like it was a little excessive. Like, what's the point of ruling the world if it's all So that they could and... rule the vaults, I guess? I guess... Uh, but gross evil yeah. pun- pencil pushers, if you ask me. And it turns out that her dad, she finds out he's one of these people. He's he's one of the he works at the Vault Tech. She finds out out the end, and that basically it starts off sad. Oh, mom's dead. You know, it's just me and Mitchell or me and Moises Irius. But then you find out that uh, apparently the mom figured out that the dad was shady, took the two children. They go, she runs into uh, Moldover, Moldaver, and they start basically this community where it's called the New Republic or... New California Republic, I believe. New California Republic, where... And it's like a nice community, and I think they were there for a couple years or whatever, I guess. A minute, yeah. And the dad finds them. He ends up he takes the kids, but guess they're too young to remember this. Drops a nuke on the place. Basically kills everyone. Except uh, as long as you hop in a fridge like our boy uh, <laughs> Indiana Maximus did. A.K. if I learned anything from Indiana Jones, yeah, you're safe. <laughs> yeah. And so that that's how he becomes an orphan, lives with them, lives with the Brotherhood. So you basically find this all out at the end that the whole reasoning behind it and all of that. Um, I guess a con I have is you have Moldover, mm-hmm. who you know you think is a bad guy, and then it turns out oh sh- she's actually friends with the mom, and she's you know good. More than friends, if you ask me. All right, I I didn't ask. Okay, but, sorry. Uh, <laughs> but the other, pe- it makes sense why. The dad is still alive because he was in the little cryo chamber, slept Mm -hmm. for 200 years, get up. But Moldova wasn't, but she's like normal age Mm -hmm. and they never talk about like it's been 200 something years. They show her before it all starts. She's like some cult leader lady Mm -hmm. comes back and they, as far as I know, there's no mention of how, how is she still kicking it how is she alive here yeah i'm not sure about that i don't <laughs> remember because she couldn't have been frozen in cryo sleep and she's not a ghoul that we know no. of maybe she's a ghoul i don't know but she, she she's not a ghoul because i'm pretty sure the ghouls you have to shoot them in the head and she died from like a stab in the stomach mm. well then you know as writer producer director of the episode i apologize that we missed that minor plot hole We'll get it fixed yeah, and post. I, yeah, I don't know what that is. And also, there's this like scene where they go to a different vault, and they are the whole group of people are doing this like blood ritual ceremony where they're praying to her. Like it's more cult stuff. They mm-hmm. strip down naked. They're drinking the blood. Blah blah blah. To her, but 
they don't really explain it. Like, I just don't know, like, what what's up with... Is that how she's alive here? That they're doing these rituals? What's going on? <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know about that. I, I <laughs> forgot I just, about that whole cult-like ritual yeah, thing. Yeah, I just wish they would have uh, kind of gave me something to like, why, go with Why here. are we doing this? I'm sure... Lucy was thinking that, but I too was thinking that for multiple reasons. <laughs> yeah. And then another thing here. It's 2077. They have TVs, yeah, obviously camcorders, cameras. They have the marine suits that are these high-tech helicopters, yada, yada. But when they, they're trying to put the warrant out for the rest of Ben <laughs> and that, like, all the other people... It's like some guy doing some sort of like extra sketch. Like he's with like a pencil. Like you remember back in like fifth grade, you do those like grid drawings where it's like <laughs> coordinate four, three, yeah. dash. Yeah. They do that. And like that's the picture they use to the most find crude them. drawings you'd ever see. <laughs> and, and I'm just like, you, they literally showed TVs everywhere. The guy from 250 years prior was a movie star like you don't have a camera you can't pull up a database yeah they have the power of the sun in the palm of their hand but they they don't have any sort of camera for well, this maybe not everyone had that technology just but some of them this the people that put out this warrant here are the vault people all like, right well you got it, me there. It, he works for them they have all this technology they developed all these vaults and you know what it is? It's it's. I think it's a form of nepotism insofar as the guy who was in charge of those signs, he needed to hire his nephew. And his nephew's like, I can kind of draw. So he put him on the payroll <laughs> just to draw those things. All right, things. fair enough. That's, you know, that's, uh, that's the explanation. All right. You got any other uh, cons here? Not a whole lot. Um, it, yeah, no, I don't think so. I, I'd say this is uh, fantastic. In a couple words, I could sum it up. Just... Must watch television, I would say. Mm -hmm. Just great show overall. Uh, I don't have any other cons. Can we get into goods? Well, let's get into goods. So, my favorite character was definitely the ghoul, Walton Goggins. Oh, same. Killing it Big in fan. his role. The first scene in that show, fantastic. It was, ooh, mm -hmm. ripped me. Just I was folding laundry while watching it. I had to stop folding laundry to watch it because I was like, this is... This is television. This is good. You know, is is engaging as, you know, because there's questions that come up. That you're like, why is why won't he do the thumbs up? You know, and it it piques mm -hmm. your interest. You know, well, you want you need to understand. You need to follow and keep watching. So good. And his character, I loved watching his character in the past, and then contrasted into the future. And that, you know, you got to see, you got to understand how he became that ghoul and the the gunslinger that he is. His character was fantastic. I loved it, seeing him, you know, just chewing scenery. Yeah, I'd say per near perfect television, if you ask me. Captured the aesthetic of Fallout, I think, really well, down to the costumes, the guns, all the details, the music, uh, everything. The vault tech was really good, even down to the, really, if, you, if you're talking about flashbacks, they, they show a lot of fun, really impractical cars. I don't know if you noticed that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> They had like sliding car doors, car doors that open up like a can opener kind of thing. Just <laughs> fun stuff like that, you know. That world build. You know, I'm a I'm a sucker for world building, and this was building worlds 101, if you ask me. Mm -hmm. And uh, one thing I really liked about it was when you when you think about video game adaptations, you're thinking about like one or two things. You're like, oh man, I really would like to see this thing. And and for me, I was like, I want to see like a cool like Deathclaw fight or a cool, you know, one like mutant fight, you know, something like that, because I like that aspect of the game. But with this, it didn't really have to rely on pandering to, like, certain video game tropes, and it's just got to be its own thing, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> if we're talking pandering, you know, in, in your favorite movie of all time, Warcraft, <laughs> it, it does the zoom out and, like, kind of moving around the screen, and you're like, ah, they did it, they did it from the, from the game, remember that, you know? Oh, yeah, that was great. I was, I was screaming in my... <laughs> Pants or you're screaming in your jeans for that. <laughs> no, but here, like, I like that it just kind of could stand on its own a bit, and you didn't need to have that one big moment. You're like, oh, that's from the video game. You know what I mean? I mm -hmm. liked that, and um, yeah, no, it's just 
it's just good stuff, man. I got no notes other than the ones I said, but <laughs> I can I just imagine looking at it. Even though I, I'm not super familiar with the game, but I'm like, I bet you that's an Easter egg. I bet mm-hmm. you, I imagine some, you know, what do you call the people that are real into Fallout? Fallout boys. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. got the fallout boys that's <laughs> that's pretty they're good. just like oh yeah look at that that's the that's the video they show oh there's the comic and blah 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 i had I a couple could, uh, of those moments in there i'm not a i'm not a true fallout boy but are you saying you're going down down yeah no <laughs> no <laughs> I'm, like i'm not a huge fan but there were moments where i was like yeah hey, hey that's a cute little reference there so it wasn't it wasn't in your face about it it was how easter egg should be you know where it doesn't pause for three seconds to have the audience applause if you know what i mean i'm talking to mm-hmm. you spider-man oh, don't come home with toby mcguire you know what i mean <laughs> don't besmirch that anyway that's probably the most viewed trailer not that joker too <laughs> yeah i like a movie that's got different character stories mm-hmm. so like this one you've got Moises, his name's Norm, mm-hmm. the brother, Lucy's brother. You got him back at the vault figuring out what's going on there. Mm-hmm. You so obviously got story. Lucy trying to get to dad. You got the ghoul, mm-hmm. his thing. And then you got Maximus, who later team gets him and Lucy. But the thing that I hate in shows is when there's different characters say, like, you know, Walking Dead or something, where they just spend a whole episode on the one character, Mm -hmm. and then you just don't do anything else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I I binged this, so it probably wouldn't have been as annoying, but especially as, like, a week-to-week show, I'm like, I don't want to just watch one character. I don't I don't even care who it is. I like to see going from here to this person to this person. And it does that. Like through each episode, you're seeing all of their perspectives, what's going on. All right, let's zoom in over here. And I'm a fan of that. Yeah, it, I think it, it helps with pacing. You know, like you said, if you're mm-hmm. a walking dead and you follow one character, you're like, let's let's move it up a little bit. Let's, let's get things going. And I want to thank people at Amazon, the good folks at Amazon for having the good sense, the good wherewithal to release all of this at once. Just yes. thank you. Thank you. Because, you know, that's what people want. Just release it all at once. I don't know what this week to week business is, but yeah, no, I totally agree that having different characters following their arts and, and I, you know, I love a converging storyline. I love when they all come together. And I, I think mm. for the most part that happened. Love coming together. Yeah. Just, I can't say enough good things about this, honestly. Walton Goggins is phenomenal. Mm-hmm. And he's got a great character arc because he starts, you know, he starts off as the villain, but then he ends up teaming up with Lucy at the end here. Mm-hmm. And you kind of, you, it does a lot of flashbacks with him and you can kind of see, you know, what's happened, how this has happened. But then there's also the scene where he base he's selling her to get money to murder, sell her organs or whatever. But then she follows the golden rule, gives him his medicine afterwards, basically mm-hmm. saves him. And then he's like, you could kind of see he's, a, he's become a new man. He shoots up some drugs, watches his old movies, and, and then he's kind of got more purpose in life here. He's trying to find his family. But yeah, I really like that. And then this isn't really a, it's not a pro nor a con, but how tall do you think uh, Moises is? Because <laughs> what it was, it was him and his cousin. Kurt, I Kurt swear Kurt. there was like a two and a half foot <laughs> difference. Yeah. And I looked up Moises, he's 5'1". Oh, wow. Which means that guy next to him is like freaking Six Yao Ming out there. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's like such a big difference. Like, yeah. Is this on purpose? Is this guy tall? I looked up the actor and I couldn't find his height. He was great in this too, by the way. Moises. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Moises. Yeah. Rico. I thought he would be a generic like kind of bratty little brother, but he, he had some depth to his character and I... Even he went on a little journey, and I'm, I can't wait for his arc to kind of come into fruition next season. I love a series that has good growth in characters, and I think all the characters had some pretty substantial growth. I mean, Lucy comes in as a wide-eyed, literally wide-eyed yeah. Uh, yeah. young woman coming into this world naive and learns and grows and does what she has to to survive. And, and then you got Maximus, who 
has kind of less of a growth. Uh, I think he is the weakest character of all of these. But then you got the ghoul who also, you know, I think his journey will come more into season two. And I can't wait for that. I think, oh, man, it's just like a perfect season because it, it piques your interest. You want to watch more, but you're also like kind of full at the end. You know what I mean? Yeah, it answers a lot of questions, but then, it, you know, it it leaves you, you still want dessert here. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I'd say a four out of five, I might even bump up four and a half. It's, yeah. it's not, if I'm comparing it to video game shows, I'd still put The Last of Us just a tick above, but it's, uh, it's pretty good. Yeah. And I don't really have any main qualms and. There's some pretty brutal, like, you know, hands getting chopped off, fingers blown violence, off. Violence, crushed feet. Violence. Just in your face blood, yeah. If that's not for you, it might, yeah, it's probably not, you're probably not going to enjoy it. Because those, mm-hmm. uh, even me, I'm like, oh, <laughs> you know, there's a couple where I was like, all right, that's, uh, that's the thing. That's yep. kind of gross <laughs> there, but. Which one, which but, uh, part got gotcha? you? I think that guy's foot when oh yeah when, right before he takes the turns into a ghoul thing yeah. that was also like ugh. they showed it <laughs> twice I was like oh, yeah not again <laughs> it's not so much it like getting blown off but it's like the it kind of flailing around yeah. or, or I'm like all right uh, <laughs> I've seen enough here man but yeah. yeah but that's how it is in the games or at least Fallout Four like it gives you that kind of reaction where you're like ah. Uh, you know? <laughs> yeah. Ugh. Anyway. Well, if there's nothing else, do you know what it's time for, Chris? Ooh. What? Uh, is it unhinged reviews? It's time for unhinged reviews. I want to preface this by saying, we, we glanced over it a little bit. The the dear Fallout boys, if you will, have, <laughs> have spoken, and they have more than qualms, if you will, with this show. And so I'm going to read some... Reviews from some diehard Fallout fans. This one's one star from PPPK. It says, Stopped watching after watching the first four episodes. Post-apocalyptic concept. Spelled concept wrong. Nothing new. Didn't like something new. Or didn't liked something new. Story and character emotionally was not depth. Bad narration. Weak character development. Uh, not interesting, spelled wrong. Exciting tension build up, mostly flop series, two thumbs down. So, well, that's just like your opinion, man. <laughs> <laughs> Perfectly <laughs> said. This one's one star from Monica Tule. Hated every minute of this. The main protagonist is awkward, clueless, incestuous weirdo. <laughs> the show is extremely violent and disturbing. There isn't a single likable character. Well, wrong, but okay. Yeah. This one's one star from Anon, Anon, Anon. Uh, it says, a show for mentally ill people by mentally ill people. Who exactly should be should we be rooting for here? One of the main protagonists is a liar, cheater, left his superior to die in the field and refused him medical care, has an annoying pout on his face, and nearly every scene looks like he's going to cry. <laughs> and we're supposed to root for this guy as he snags the lead lady who is way out of his league? Hmm. I mean, the actor is great for him, just a missed cast, and and the writing is not good at all. The other main seems to be a Mary Sue-ish, just, and just has that aura of annoying 2020-era strong female-led who is pissed off at the world and ultra-powerful. As for the Raiders in Episode 1, it makes no sense what they did, really. No food was even stolen, which you'd think would be the primary goal of the raid. And in real life, I assume raiders would probably capture attractive females and use them, as you see occur in the third world countries all the time. Instead, it appears that directors thought the raiders were just evil who went in to kill for fun. Well, pretty absurd overall. The whole show seems they have no likable characters at all outside of Kyle McLaughlin's character who has gone after the first episode. I'd venture to say this person didn't finish the series. Yeah. (laughs) But uh, he was, I was with him in the first half. You got me in the first with, half, not going to yeah, lie. Yeah, <laughs> with Maximus. Yeah. I'm like, I, he's nothing wrong here. I, I see it. <laughs> I get that. I, you got some valid points. Anon, anon, yeah. anon, anon. Good. This one's one star from Hamich Dabby. It says, 
Parts of this are okay, but it's just being used to virtual signal to woke audiences. 85% of the people who play the game chose a male hero, but f it feels forced casting that they replaced it with a female hero. Just another greedy studio that wants to capitalize on off both sexes under the guise of diversity. I boycott this, or tomorrow they'll make a Call of Duty movie with a female squad. <laughs> a lot of people are calling this woke. I was fine with the female lead. I yeah, honestly didn't really think about it. And she wasn't a Mary Sue. She she got her finger cut off. Like she yeah. she got crapped on a bunch, man. Like she was not good at everything at all. And that's what a Mary Sue is. And then to finish off, these aren't unhinged, but just more positive because we're we want to be more positive about things, right? Yeah, yeah. So we got positive. five stars from Gia here. Gia Folia says, as a fan of the games, I'll admit that most of the video games shows fall flat. This was a great right from the beginning. My roommate is a tough critic. He has no knowledge of the games, but we both fell in love with from episode one. Amazon, this is your best work ever. Quite literally, a great show. I will say, I've never seen the show incorporate game canon so easily. It's clear the writers are fans of the games and took time to get it right. Awesome job. So yeah, there's I, there's yeah. a lot more positives than negatives. A lot of people who are putting this one star, they're just kind of those those fallout boys who are having mm -hmm. trouble, you know. I mean, to me, I don't. It's a good show. Just let it be a good show. Is That's it all. the best Amazon show? Ooh, I'd say it's so. But that or Amazon's Invincible. been been hitting it lately. They got Jack Reacher, Invincible, The Boys, Mister and Mrs. Smith. They yeah. creamed their jeans. In a bad way with Lord of the Rings of Power, if you ask me, but I didn't hate it. Uh, that that and Warcraft, those are great hand in hand films. I enjoy and I will defend. All right, that's just, that's just like <laughs> that's, your opinion, man. <laughs> I, I, and I stick to it. I'll defend it. Anyway, I think that's all we have for our thoughts on on the TV show Fallout. Uh, great show. We liked it, and let us know if you liked it. Leave us a your thoughts in the comments and be sure to like and subscribe chris anything else no thanks for listening uh we were just so passionate about the show it's probably gonna be our longest episode to date so if you made it this far you're a real one you are you're a real true one. fallout boy mm. a real pop head a real pod head or a pop head. pod head or pod, pod. Head. oh speaking of which pod. i want to give a shout out real quick to uh, there's someone on our YouTube channel who always comments and, and leaves us fun things. Username Chaos is coming nine one eight four. Shout out to you, bud! Thanks for watching our videos and commenting. Appreciate it. And yeah, then another you. little housekeeping item. Next week episode might be a little late coming out because I got family coming in. So just for the four people who will watch this when episodes come out, just letting you know it might be a little late next week. Anyway, but. We got a real banger next week. You're going to want to tune in, strap in, strap on, whatever it is. Because <laughs> next week is going to be a real doozy. Mm, I'm looking forward to it. Very much yeah. so. Thanks for listening. Have a good week. Bye. Bye. That's it. That's the, that's the intro.